Hey, hey, party people, I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com, and today I want to show you how you can instantly add style to your edit with flash transitions in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, just like with all of my tutorials, you are not required to purchase anything in order to follow along, but I do want you to be able to have these elements because I love you. So head on over to 4kfree.com. That's 4kfree.com, and it's going to take you to this page if you've never signed up before. If you have signed up before, just go ahead and put your info in and hit click here to download, and it will take you straight there, right? Okay, but if you've never been here before, all you have to do, and this is completely free, it takes you 20 seconds to sign up. Go ahead and enter your full name and your email address. And then click click here to download. After you click that, it'll send you a link into your email, and it'll take you right here. The link is going to take you right here to this wonderful page built by Final Cut Steph just for you because we love you. So check this out. Everything we give away for free at 4kfree.com comes from our professional library that you see at rampantdesigntools.com. So if you want to test out anything we've ever shot, and this is all created by Stephanie and myself, if you're interested in our film burns or our reflections or, or anything, our mats, you can just log into 4kfree.com whenever you want and click any of the buttons that say click here to download free effects. If you click that, it will, act, will start downloading right away, Zoop. and as you can see, blammy. In just a few minutes, I'm going to have uh, 4k real clutter for free. Pretty cool, right? So what we want to do those is scroll down past project files, scroll down film and light. Feel free to come back here and download everything, right? Scroll past all this, scroll past animated mats, and go to rampant transitions. Right here at the bottom is flash transitions. That's what we're talking about right now. Now, like I said before, everything that we give away for free is from our paid library. So if you click click here to purchase full product, it's not going to charge you anything. It's just going to take you to our product page. And here you can see how many flash transitions are included. Get all kinds of examples of, of, of what kind of flash transitions are in the library. You can buy it. You can just see what people have to say. You know, you can check it all out. But everything that we give away at 4K Free is from the professional library. But it's not watermarked. I never understood that. I made these things with my own bare hands. I want you to like them and love them. How could you possibly love them? If they're watermarked that's crazy so what do I do I give it to you for free and it's straight from the library and you can use it in your personal or professional work today it doesn't cost you anything and it you don't have to link to us you don't have to give us any credit you can just use your stuff in your work and look like a rock star and not spend any money okay so you've downloaded flash transitions let's get into Premiere Pro and I'll show you how to use them right so this is the next question well I got your transitions how do I use them I went under I went to my effects window here, and uh, let's see, I, I, I pull down video effects, no, maybe video effects transition, no, I don't see rampant anywhere, video transition, no, what happened, how do I get these things in here? These do not work in the sense, uh, in the traditional sense that you would invoke them like a plugin, right? These aren't plugins, these are real flashes, real flares that I shot in my studio so you can have uh, flary and flashy transition goodness for real. This is, these are real lights and glass, so it's always going to look different. I always start uh, with an optical stance versus a digital stance. I don't work in the box. I shoot everything with my cameras and my lights before I ever uh, touch a box. So, okay, here's the thing. How do you bring them in? Well, it's real simple. Go to your project window and either right click and hit import or go under file and hit import, right? Then find your fi files that you downloaded. Uh, we're giving away one, two, three, four, five flash transitions for free from the flash transitions library. So just highlight them all and hit import. These work on both the PC and the Mac. It doesn't matter what version of Premiere you're using. These are, these are just media files like you bring in uh, from any other project. Okay. And now and here you go. You should organize them. You can scrub through them. This is uh, pretty easy to use. I've already brought these in. So I'm going to delete these and I already put them in a nice little bin like so. Okay. Let's pull this bin down here. All. Cool. Like I said before, the quickest way to audition these is to just scrub through and you can see all the flashy, flary goodness. Check all that goodness out. Cool. So how do I make these? How do I use these? I brought them in. What's next? All right. Well, it's really simple. As you can see, I've already pre-made these shots like so. And we're, for this first shot, we're going to go from this shot right here to that shot using the flishy, flashy goodness of flash transitions. So first order of business, I've got to get these flashes here into my timeline. So I'm just going to use this one because this is my favorite. And I'm just going to drag it and drop it onto my timeline like so. All right, let's zoom in. So if I roll back, you're like, well, hey, that's great. I see a flash, but um, it's not covering my edit. And uh, all I see is black here. and I don't see my footage. What's going on? All right, first things first, let's go ahead and scrub through and find the shot, the part of the shot, the frame uh, right here where it's completely full, right? I'm going to go ahead and peel this back. You can also use the uh, razor tool if you wanted to. Let's match this cut with this cut with our edit. So let's just drag this up and there you go. And then just peel this layer back like so. And if I roll it back, it's going to. All right. So that solves the part for the covering the edit. 
but it's still not showing me my footage. What do I do? Let's highlight the effect. Hit Shift 5 to go to Effect Controls. And right here under Opacity, you're looking for Blend Mode, like here, and change it from Normal to Screen. This is real light, so we want to blend it into our footage. Let's roll it back. Whammy. We now have a gorgeous, real flash transition. All right, so let me show you something here. I'd like to just talk to you about why 4K. We get this email every single day. Sean, why is it that I need to have 4K? I only work in HD. I, you know, I've got a small amount of RAM or I've got a small amount of hard drive space or, you know, whatever it is. I work on a laptop. I, I just, I think 4K is going to destroy my computer, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of misnomers. 4K is just a larger frame, right? That's all it is. Because it's a larger frame, it gives you ultimate flexibility. So check this out. I'm in an HD timeline. Let me zoom out here. And this right here is an HD clip in an HD timeline. If I highlight it and I go over here to motion, it'll show you the frame line. Boop. See, fun little box. This is an HD clip, okay? So why is that important, Sean? Let's go ahead and highlight the 4K flash that I give you. Go over there and highlight motion, bammy. Check this out. This is 4K, right? So I'm only seeing a small sliver of this beautiful 4K flash. So why does that matter? Well, it matters for ultimate repositionability. Every single clip becomes infinitely more useful now that you can repo it and get really the design you're looking for. So let's just, you know, just grab it and move it around, right? So just by moving it to the bottom left-hand corner and rolling it back, I get a completely different look. I can go back and maybe I, I want it to do this one. Where I want less of the flash, right? Cool. Or maybe I want to center it and I want it to be smaller. I want to get more of that 4K beautiful goodness in here. That's cool too, see? There you go. So now the flash comes from the center because I've scaled it down. If you double click on the element and you scroll through it, you get all these beautiful flashes from the sides and the center, and then it just bleeds into this beautiful color, right? Well, you're only going to get that if you shrink it down to get the whole shot. But now that you can position, rotate, scale, every single clip becomes infinitely more powerful because of that extra real estate you have. So if you're going to make the choice between a 2K or an HD element and 4K, Go ahead and spend the few extra bucks to get 4K because one, you'll be future proofed and two, you get a ton, just an absolute ton more flexibility out of these elements versus just getting them at HD and they are what they are, right? Okay. So I told you I was going to show you how to do this stuff. I've got a couple more examples, but that's it. It's drag, drop, and blend. If you can drag, drop, and blend, you can use any of our light products. All right. So we were going to go ahead and recreate this shot, right? Let's say I don't want to go back and drag and drop again. It's like, come on, guys. Let's say I've got an edit and I've already done this a hundred times. Do I really need to go back here, audition, drop it and blend it? No, you, no, you really don't. If you've got one that you like, you can do a couple things. You can highlight the flash that you like, like so. And on the Mac, option drag or on the PC, alt drag, and then just drag it over your edit, right? Now you're gonna have to reposition it a little bit. So just zoom in like so, and then just grab it. There you go. See, didn't have to do that. Now, what if I like where the flash is? Like, okay, that's my transition, but I don't want that specific flash. I want a different one. Do I have to erase it and replace it? No. Come on now. This is Premiere Pro. We have lots more flexibility than that. Find the shot. So we're currently using number 98, right? So this is number 94. Let's go ahead and grab it. And Option or Alt, depending upon if you're on a Mac or PC, and replace it. Boom. See? And I can do that all day long. Let's, where's that blue one? Option drag, alt drag, boom. See? So once the, the flare is in place, I can swap it out super quickly. I can also copy and paste it, right? If I highlight this flare and I hit copy, make sure you're pasting on, a, on the right layer. You don't want to paste on over your video, right? And you just hit paste. Oh, snap. I've already done all the work and I don't have to do it again. Cool. Now, what if I'm in a situation where I, I have a bunch of flares, but for whatever reason, I just didn't, I never blended them. For whatever reason, I'm just like, oh, I love this. This is great. Oh, wait, I have to blend them. You could always highlight it, hit shift five to take you to effects controls uh, and then change the blend mode. Or if you've already got a flare or a flash on your, on your timeline that, that is blended already, just highlight that. Go over to effect controls, shift five if it's not open, highlight opacity and you're looking for blend mode, right? So just highlight opacity and hit copy. And then just go to your flare that, that hasn't been blended, highlight it, and hit paste. Blammy. It's going to copy and paste your blend mode. What, what? Sweet. 
So it's super, super easy to use this stuff. And it's just like, you know, it's like, what, what was I stressing about? Nothing. These are free and they look gorgeous and they're real light and you can add real light to your projects without any effort. But what if you're like, look, I love this flash, but I need it to be a different color. My color palette's different or the shot's different. What, you know, what can you do to help me here? Because this is great, but I don't want this big yellow flash. I want something a little more pertinent to my project. Not a problem. Highlight your, your uh, flash transition and go to your project window and go to effects. And in your search box, type in tint. And just grab the tint and drag it onto your flash. Blammy. Now it instantly changes the yellow to white because it's saying map white to white, right? So that's the default. So if you roll it back, you actually get a kind of a cool white flash. And you can see that happen. Uh, you can see these flashes a lot in um, documentaries and long form uh, marketing pieces and stuff. Um, this right here, the flash happens after the cut. So let's just go ahead and drag this down just a little bit. There we go. Cool. So now you've got this cool white flash, right? But now you're like, well, wait a second. I don't, I don't want a white flash. Uh, that's fine. But I, I just don't want. I just don't want one. So highlight your effect. Shift five to go to effect controls if it's not already open, and just highlight white and just pick something. You know, maybe my color palette is this. I don't know, purpley look. Boom. See, there you go. And if you're like, well, that's just overbearing and it really doesn't work for me, you can always dial back the tint, right? You can always get a more natural look by, you know, 50, 60. A tint is, is exactly that. It's a tint. It's like throwing food coloring over something, right? So you've always got the ability to um, tr change things and make them what you want. So let's say this purple one I really like. I'm going to option, replace it like that. But I've already added purple to this look, so let's change this and make it a blue. There you go. And see, now it's a multicolor. You can see because we're not tinting it 100%, right? So it's going from purple to blue. This is actually a really beautiful, really beautiful stain. But it's only at 50%, right? 57%. I could do the same with, I don't know, let's make it that green again, right? Or... I don't know, maybe a red. You, you get my point here. This is whatever you want it to be. You don't have to put everything at full throttle. It doesn't have to be at 100% all the time. You know, that's crazy. If it works for your piece, use it. But if it's too much and you still like the, the, the flash, just dial it in until it works for you. I mean, I would always start at 50% and either go more or less from there. But see, there you go. This is all based on real light. It's super easy to use. And wow, if it wasn't for my yapping, you'd be done already. So that's it. You can see how easy it is to drag and drop flash transitions right into your timeline. And if you don't want to spend the money, you can get them for absolutely free at 4kfree.com. But let's say you do want a bunch more flash transitions hand created with love by myself and Final Cut Steph. So why don't you head on over to flashtransitions.com. That's flashtransitions.com. And that will take you right here to our flash transitions page. And you know what? If you want to go ahead and grab 2K or 4K flash transitions, I love you. And because you spent your time with me and, and listened to my tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and give you a 20% off coupon exclusive to only people who watch our tutorials and go ahead and enter run rampant in the coupon box. And this will take 20% off of any of our products, including this one. So go ahead and load up on some uh, flash transition goodness for not a lot of money because we love you. So again, thank you so much for watching. I got nothing but love for each and every one of you. Please, please, please click that blue R in the lower right-hand corner right there to subscribe to this channel. We run on love here. Thank you so much. And please don't forget to like, share, and comment. Uh, we love to hear what you think. And if you like it, please like it and, and share it with your friends. And of course, until next time, I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com. Thanks for watching.